Now in Europe, we wanted to just look at some of the good, some of the bad, because there's a kind of a, a mixed bag when you start looking at what is, what is the data telling us? So the consumer confidence for all of uh, the Eurozone aggregate came in at negative 19.2, same from February. So still some of that concern, economic confidence waffled a bit, but kind of consistent with February. Industrial confidence dipped into negative territory. The important one is going to be service confidence because the service side has really been the thing that has held up better than most especially in Europe, but that's something that we see coming down again. And, and that's going to be, uh, that's going to be the one to watch because manufacturing, we know exports are slowing. We, we know there's pressure there, but the service side has been very robust in Europe, which has been a good thing to see from an economic perspective, but is also going to give the ECB more support to, to raise rates and, and to try to get things under control. So then when you look at, uh, at CPI estimates, expected 7.1% came in at 6.9, month over month came in at 0.9. But, uh, but the problem is CPI core is that it is sticky and it actually accelerated versus Feb. And that's a big problem. And that's the one that you have to look at and what the ECB is going to hone in on and why there's going to be some of that pressure, even though the Eurozone manufacturing slightly better, but still 47.3, which is fairly steep contraction. PPI was expected at negative 0.5, came in at negative 0.5 PPI. So you're still getting, it's month over month, PPI is slowing, that's a positive. But now when you look at March and into April, you got this pivot higher in um, in crude pricing, you still have an elevated amount of diesel and LNG prices are creeping up. So that's the PPI one's going to be an interesting one to watch. But then you look at Eurozone services. So it was expected to be at 55.6, came in at 55, slowing, but not as aggressive. But if you look at the composite, expected at 54.1, came in at 53.7, so the service one is going to be again that bellwether because manufacturing we don't see that that we don't see a jump into expansion. So the question is going to be how fast the services fall, and then that will pull down the underlying composite. But given these numbers, yes, they're slightly below estimates and slightly below February, but by no means in a direction that is going to keep the ECB on this on the sidelines. So now when we start looking at Germany, you can see that there was actually an acceleration in, in inflation, uh, expected to be a 0.7, came in at 0.8, uh, year over year, same thing. Import prices coming down, uh, import price index coming down, that is a positive when you think about the fact that this is an exporting nation, they import some of these semi-finished goods, raw materials to export, that is a positive. But retail sales, so retail sales were expected to be up 0.5 came in down 1.3%. That's going to be the one to watch, which as we said uh, previously in February, in, in February about January, we thought February, based on what we saw, it was slowing down. Now we see that accelerating in March. So that's going to be the pressure point when you start looking at services as we continue to see unemployment coming up a, a, a tick. But German manufacturing still saying in deep correction, but exports, imports are showing a little bit of life, which could, which should be good for manufacturing. We don't think it goes into expansion, but you're coming out of some of these doldrums. It's just going to be kind of that ba that balancing back and forth with factory orders, you know, picking up. So again, that's a, a nice little positive. So we should see a little bit of support for some of this information, uh, some of this data. But the service PPI, PMI expected at 53.9 came in at 53.7. Global composite, again, 52.6, which with, uh, with the German construction, with construction just essentially at a standstill, going from 48.6 in Feb to 42.9 in March, which again is just more pressure in terms of where some of these uh, levels are. But services is holding up, factory orders improving a bit. And that's going to put a little bit of a bump and keep the ECB, I think, uh, ready to go. CPI also accelerated in France, which again puts a bit puts things a bit on the on their back foot with consumer spending expected to be down 0.1, coming in down 0.8, and that's that 
has yet to really filter down. And that's where we see the biggest concern when we're looking at activity with PP, with PPI, you know, kind of holding in, coming down a bit, but not to the same degree that was hoped. When you start looking at manufacturing PMI slowing down with expected to be at 47.7, came in at 47.3. Some of the industrial production numbers, manufacturing production slightly higher, but services was expected to be at 55.5. And this one had a sizable drop because France was actually the worst out of all of them coming at 53.9. So that's when we start looking at this contraction and it's a shrinking bubble. It's not like it popped and th- like it did on the manufacturing side, the construction side services. And again, coming back to the consumer is always going to be this stickiness and the hardest one to see that bigger drop down in general, which we have to really pay attention to. Then turning to Italy, you had PPI taking a, a nice drop by 1.3%, you know, industrial sales uh, slowing down versus, uh, versus December, CPI excuse me, coming in slightly better and coming in at about uh, 8.8 versus estimate of 1.5, but an acceleration from February. And that was what we had been saying is that we saw it accelerating. Clearly it didn't accelerate as much as estimates, but it was still going up. And that's where we see some of this pressure coming into the Italian markets. When you start looking at manufacturing slightly in, in expansion, but now this is the opposite where France was expected to be, see services at 55.5 came in at that 53 number. Italy was expected to see 53.7 came in at 55.7. So it's all about this balancing act, but we're starting to see retail, retail sales cool. So I, we think this is more of like a pop and a fade when you look at activity and you see some of these pressure points because France had, they had uh, protests, they had um, all of these issues in, in March, which really impacted that. So we do think that there should be a little bit of a reprieve, but not to the same degree, just given some of the underlying stresses in the European markets. Global recession, when you start looking at manufacturing PMI and then PMI orders minus inventories, when you look at Austria, Sweden, Czech, Netherlands, they're all moving in that direction. So most manufacturing PMIs recovered late last year, but then period of respite has ended all across Europe. Manufacturing PMIs have rolled over and are now turning weaker once again. So again, you're seeing that you had that bounce and now you're getting that fade and that's why we think that the economy is going to slow, but given some of the other pieces of services and inflation still there, the ECB is still going to raise rates. And, and that's where you get that conundrum that we see in the U.S. and in other central banks is, yes, things are getting worse, but they're not that bad yet. And inflation's still there. It's getting a bit better, but not to the degree it should be. And that's, again, keeping those rates elevated and really no pivot in any of these central banks that we've been talking about on the developed side. We've seen some of that slow down, and we'll talk about that in the next segment with India. But again, some of that pressure remains. So that's what we have for you in, the, in Europe. In the next segment, we're going to go deeper into China, uh, South Korea, India, and Japan to look at some of those Asian nations at this point in time. 